After winning the first two games of this four-game series against the Padres, the Giants dropped the next two, including one in the afternoon today. The Dodgers were off, but they continued to win uh, all week before today. And so the Giants' lead in the division is down to one with 15 games remaining. So we'll talk about it all on today's Locked on Giants podcast. On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants Baseball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. This episode is brought to you by Spotify Greenroom. Download the app and join me on Sunday toward the end of the game to get in on the action. And coming up on today's show, we are going to talk about, like I said, the Giants dropping these last two games against the Padres after winning the first two. And, you know, the fact is the Giants have easily the best record in the game right now. Well, I guess it's not easily because there's one team that's right on their heels and it just so happens that that one team happens to play in their same division and that is the Dodgers. Of course, nobody said this was going to be easy and maybe it's better that it's not because the Giants are going to get really important games here down the stretch. Every game is going to start to feel like a playoff game as we close in on the end of the season, which is just over two weeks away. Giants only have 15 games remaining, and their lead in the NL West is down to one game. They've pretty much held on to the top spot in Major League Baseball, and of course that means in the division as well, for most of the season. But the fact is that the Dodgers are also having a great year, and so they are right on the Giants' heels. Just a reminder, this show is on YouTube, so uh, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify or wherever, that's great, but just know you can also check us out on YouTube. And to everyone who is watching on YouTube, hello, and thank you so much for joining us here. So the, uh, the Dodgers were off today, and so the Giants entering the day with a one and a half game lead in the division, it meant that if they could find a way to win today, they could have pushed that lead in the NL West up to two games with 15 remaining. So today today was a pretty big swing day. And in fact, uh, up on Fangraphs, the uh, Fangraphs now has the odds for the Giants to win the division below 50%. And that kind of checks out for me. I feel like uh, when their lead was two and a half, which it was for quite a while, that equates to the Giants having a distinct advantage to win the division. But when it's so tight, when it's just one game uh, of a lead, I think that it does swing into the Dodgers' favor, given that there is some time left on the schedule. Both teams have 15 games remaining. Uh, Fangraphs is projecting that the Giants will finish with 103 wins. So, you know, that wouldn't take all that much. That would just be eight and seven uh, to close out the season. Hopefully they can do better, th- better than that. Uh, Fangraphs has the Dodgers, though, with 103.4 wins, which actually means more likely 103 than 104. And so this is a point that I've been wanting to make, that a tie would not be the worst thing in the world. What a tie would mean is that the Giants would get to host a game 163 against the Dodgers obviously in San Francisco. That's what I mean by host. And if you win that game, you've won the division. You've taken the division crown from the Dodgers uh, for the first time since 2012, for the first time for the Giants winning the division since 2012, and for the first time for the Dodgers not winning the division since 2012. And so I would give them pretty good odds in a game like that just because the Giants have played that Dodgers team tough historically over the last eight years or whatever, during their stretch of dominance, the Giants have played them as tough as anybody. Uh, We've talked about this a number of times, but 
the head-to-head record between these two teams since 2013 is close to 500. You know, equal number of wins and losses, roughly. Uh, and the Dodgers against everybody else are like 250 games over 500. So somehow, some way, the Giants have played that Dodgers team tough. And I like the Giants' chances in San Francisco in a in a one game situation like that. And the beauty of that scenario is that if you were to lose that game, you would still then get to stay right where you are and host the wild card game. It would probably be the next day. I actually am not sure uh, if the NL plays first or if the AL plays first. They usually do the wild card games on two separate days, not the same day. I believe that AL usually goes first. So that would give the Giants an off day. So a tie wouldn't be the worst thing. And that's why a one-game lead for the Giants, to me, is kind of effectively a two-game lead. The Dodgers have to pass the Giants for me to have that distinct advantage. Obviously, it's better to just win the division outright. But getting two chances to win one game, I think, would be pretty good odds. Uh, If those games are 50-50, let's just say, then the odds of winning one of two 50-50 games would be 75%. Uh, And when when you factor in the fact that the Giants would be hosting both games, it would be above 75 percent, probably probably that they would win one of those two games in advance to the NLDS and possibly uh, to face to end up facing the Dodgers anyway. So it's going to be fascinating to see what happens down the stretch here. One game lead. Like I said, nobody said it was going to be easy and maybe it's better off uh, that it's not going to be easy. So. Coming up next, we're going to look at the Giants' remaining schedule. We're going to look at the Dodgers' remaining schedule, and we'll talk a little bit about what went down uh, with these two games, the Giants losing both of them, allowing a total of 16 runs, allowing 30 hits in these two games. So we'll get into all of that and any and all roster moves that the Giants have made over the last couple of days. But first, this episode is brought to you by Green Room. Green Room is the first social audio platform made for sports fans. The app is free to download, and once you're in, you can chat with me, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. I'll be hosting rooms for Locked On Giants once a week. Yes, you can finally join in on the, on the conversation you listen to here every day. Green Room is the perfect place to start or join conversations about the league. You'll have uh, you'll find fans just like you on Green Room for watch parties, debates, post game breakdowns, and of course reacting to big news or rumors. Be sure to join me this Sunday. I'll be hosting a room uh, towards the end of the game on Sunday. So go download the free Green Room app uh, currently av- available on all iOS devices. Be sure to create a profile, link your Twitter, and join the MLB group for the latest league updates. Follow me at Ben Kaspik to be notified when my room goes live. I know you won't want to miss it. I'm planning to be live on Sunday toward the end of the game. I can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts on the Giants, so I'll see you there. Green Room, changing the way we talk sports. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back to start another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this year. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, betonline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. You don't, uh, Don't forget to use the promo code NFL100. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, and of course, don't forget about postseason baseball coming up. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Promo code locked on. All right, as promised, we're going to take a look at the uh, Giants and Dodgers upcoming schedules. And then I also want to talk, uh, I guess we'll save it for last. I want to talk about what went down in these two games, how did the Giants uh, lose to the Padres in two consecutive games? Let's not forget that's a talented team, right? Like what kind of went, what kind of happened in the series is that Fernando Tatis Jr. made an impact. Jerickson Profar got hot. 
uh, Joe Musgrove, who has, you know, the Padres have had, had all kind of pitching problems, but Joe Musgrove has not been among them. So I had a bad feeling about, you know, that game, the Giants going with a bullpen game in game three of the series, the Padres going with their best pitcher by far. And so not all that surprising that they found a way to lose that game. And in both games, the Giants made it interesting. They they kind of had their chances and they just couldn't come through. But the difference that uh, took place in those games that is not normal for this Giants team is that they were playing from behind. They They gave up runs and were constantly trying to catch up. The Giants are used to playing from ahead. That has been the formula all season long. Let's not forget, you know, despite a couple of rough games, the Giants still have the best record in baseball as they have had more often by far than any team in the 2021 season. So the Giants have set the bar so high that just a little two game losing streak feels like a big deal around here. And it's because of their position in the standings. Like if the Giants played in the NL East, even with the Braves, I'm not saying if the Giants like swapped places with the first place team in the East, but even including the first place team, Giants would basically be clinching the division right now. And so it's a little bit unfair that they play in this division. If you listen to yesterday, <coughs> excuse me, yesterday's show, uh, talking with Javier Reyes, he and I got into a conversation about how I think, and I've said this a thousand times, that the playoff format is unfair with you know, one of the Giants and Dodgers are going to be in the wild card game. Of course, I hope it's the Dodgers and I hope they get eliminated in one game. I think that would be, as a fan of the Giants, that would be great, kind of the best case scenario. But as a objective baseball analyst, it's just not fair that one of the two best teams in baseball is going to be subjected to a single elimination playoff game when you've got other teams in other divisions winning with records that are barely over 500. The Braves uh, are just not barely over 500. Let me pull up their record here. Braves are 76 and 68. So the Giants have 19 uh, more wins than the Braves. And yet the Braves are going to get, assuming they can win the division, they've got a team one game over 500 that's right on their heels, just three and a half games back. So It's just not fair, and this is not just me crying about it because the Giants are in this situation. I've been talking about this since I started podcasting. Uh, I happened to start podcasting in 2015, and one of the first things we talked a lot about was the unfairness of the wildcard game in the NL Central when there were two teams with 97-plus wins that had to play each other in the wildcard game because the division winner had 100. Uh, Cardinals had 100, Cubs had 90. Seven and uh, Pirates had 98. And so uh, it kind of ended the Pirates' little run of success, and it's just not fair. So I really hope this changes, and I hope that the Giants can avoid this situation where you end up being the best team in baseball for like 95% of the year, and then you have to play in a one-game playoff, and then you lose, and your season's over. That's the worst-case scenario, and hopefully that doesn't happen, but having just the one-game lead in the division doesn't make it you know, all that unlikely of a scenario. So the final 15 games, let's talk about that. Uh, The Giants just finished up this four game uh, series with the Padres. So they're about to finish up their second to last homestand of the year. Three games against the Atlanta Braves, two night games and a day game on Sunday. Uh, We can talk about the pitching matchups in a second or maybe towards the end of the show. But then the Giants are off on Monday, their second to last off. Uh, And then they head out on the road for three against the Padres and then three against the Colorado Rockies. And that closes out their road season. That'll be it for road games this year. So a lot of Padres still to come. Giants will see them in just a few days here. And then the Giants also finish out the season against the Padres. So this has the potential to be huge because both teams could potentially be fighting for playoff position in the last 10 games or so, and specifically in the last three games of the year. Padres are currently like right there in the thick of the wild card race. I think they might might just be half a game back. They're about, they're about to play the Cardinals, the team directly ahead of them. The Cardinals have actually snuck into that second wild card spot because the Padres and the Reds had been scuffling and 
uh, allowing another team to just sneak in a team that, you know, got a little bit hot. I think the Cardinals maybe have won like five games in a row. So they get a little bit hot and they just snuck into that second spot. And that's potentially relevant to the Giants because the Giants very well could end up being the team that plays the second wildcard team. What we know for certain is that the Giants will either be in the wildcard game or they're going to win the NL West. And they'll either host the wildcard game or be in the NLDS. Uh, and I think if they're in the NLDS, they're very likely to host the first round. Uh, well, not necessarily, actually. If they go to the wildcard game and end up playing the Dodgers in the first round, the Dodgers would have home field advantage. First two games would be in L.A. So let's talk about L.A. next. Dodgers were off today on the 16th, and now they begin their last road trip of the year. Yeah, let's see. The, yeah, their last road trip of the year is about to start. It's a long one. It's a nine-game road trip that includes a couple days off on the trip before they play their next home stand. So uh, three in Cincinnati, followed by an off day, and then three in Colorado, followed by three in Arizona. So that's not a particularly tough road trip for the Dodgers. We all know Colorado can get a little bit weird, so hopefully the weirdness happens there. The Rockies are going to play them tough. The Rockies don't like the Dodgers either. Nobody in this division does, and I'm sure they want to play the role of spoilers, although they'll have a chance immediately afterward against the Giants. So hopefully they get it out of their system against the Dodgers, and then the Giants come in and can beat them. Remember the last time the Giants were there, which was just... A week or so ago, week and a half maybe, uh, the Giants swept the Rockies. First time they've been swept at home all season. So after that, the Dodgers come home and they have a pretty tough last homestand. They play three against the Padres and then three against the Brewers. So that Brewers team, as we all know, is very tough and they might not be playing for much except possibly home field advantage. So the Brewers may... Uh, really want to give their best effort in that series. The The difficulty is Brewers are about to clinch their division. So it's, it's possible they're not really playing for much at that point. You hope that they are. Uh, obviously, they'll want to get sharp ahead of the playoffs. So they're not just going to mail it in during that series. But you just hope that the competitive juices are there when the Brewers come into town. But you know uh, it's going to be there with the Padres. So hopefully uh, the, the Reds and the Rockies, I don't know about the D-backs, but then the Padres and the Brewers can play that Dodgers team tough. To me, that looks like a little bit more of a difficult schedule than what the Giants have for the rest of the season. So 15 games left for both teams. Here we go. You know, both the Giants and Dodgers are off on the same days, actually, uh, to finish out the season. So no more half games for the rest of the way, unless there's a rainout or something, because Currently, it's one game and it's not going to, you know, they have the same off days coming up for the rest of the year. So I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun and down the stretch they come, right? So uh, coming up next, we'll talk about the specifics of the games the Giants played, what went wrong, and uh, any and all roster moves that also got made in the last couple of days. But first... Did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's really something for everyone. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their favorites. We spend a lot of time in our Locked On group chat talking about our favorite Built Bar flavors. There's a lot to choose from. Coconut, cherry, raspberry, mint, brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel. Getting hungry just reading this list. Strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate, my favorite, it's really hard to choose. I'm going to say raspberry for today. I know it's like, how is it your favorite if you're choosing a different one? But it's because they're all delicious. And the thing is, these Built Bars taste like candy bars, but they come in with a healthy profile, and that's really important to me. We're talking about 17 to 18 grams of protein, so real solid there, and only 4 to 5 grams of sugar and 4 to 5 grams net carbs. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you, came, lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. 
Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get that all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right, as promised, we are going to get into what went down over the last couple games. How did the Giants lose these two games? What went wrong? What can possibly be corrected, if anything? And all the roster moves. So there's actually a lot of news, and we'll how about talk about that first. How about the injury updates, right? Donovan Solano, Alex Dickerson, Alex Wood. We have updates on all of them. Donovan Solano apparently could be recalled or activated, excuse me, as soon as Friday. He might go to Sacramento tonight and get a couple of at-bats. That's courtesy of Kerry Crowley. And then sfgiants.com says that Solano rejoined the Giants following a brief rehab assignment at AAA and faced Alex Wood in live batting practice on August or excuse me, September 15th. So on Wednesday, he and Alex Dickerson, Solano and Dickerson took batting practice against Alex Wood. So three different guys who are currently on the IL Dickerson with a hamstring strain, Solano and Alex Wood tested positive for COVID-19. Apparently it was pretty bad for Alex Wood and he is uh, dealing with a little bit of a cough and congestion and also his energy level remains kind of low. So he's going to be evaluated on Thursday. So he was evaluated today, I guess, and he could rejoin the rotation as soon as Saturday if he continues to progress well. So Gabe Kepler said, quote, there's a good chance that Alex Wood will start on Saturday against the Braves. So I'm not actually entirely sure I should have this pulled up what their pitching plan is for Friday, but let's see in the rotation. I believe it would make it uh, not Anthony DiScalfani. I'm trying to pull it up here. Uh, Logan Webb. Okay. Logan Webb in the first game against the Braves and then Alex Wood in the second game. Likely Uh, he could of course not go deep into the game right he's coming back he's missed quite a bit of time not that much but enough and he lost some weight apparently he was really ill and he was bedridden and he had a fever for like a week he said he didn't get out of bed for like a week so I'm glad first and foremost that Alex Wood is on the mend it sounds pretty scary I'm not sure about his vaccination status I know that Donovan Solano was fully vaccinated and had a break and had a breakthrough case And from from what I have heard, his case was not as severe, or at least I haven't heard anything about it being severe. And so I'm assuming it wasn't as severe. So anyway, then Anthony DiSclafani set to go on Sunday. And for the Braves, it is supposed to be Ian Anderson on Friday, Charlie Morton on Saturday, and Max Freed on Sunday. So those are some good starting pitchers. That's what you're going to get when you're facing the Atlanta Braves. They have some good starting pitching. All three of those guys can beat you. So potentially a playoff preview. If the Giants do meet the Braves, it will likely be in the NLCS. The Braves played them tough when the Giants were in Atlanta uh, a couple weeks ago. So hopefully the Giants can uh, correct that. This is obviously a huge series. Every uh, series the rest of the way is going to be huge. But Alex Wood coming back would be would be a big deal because the Giants have had to go with a bullpen game at two different spots in their rotation. And I think that it's held up pretty well for the most part. But uh, on Wednesday, I I don't want to say the strategy didn't work. It's just that the pitchers didn't do well. Dominic Leone had an off night. Harleen Garcia had an off night. And then towards the end of the game, Jose Quintana and Jose Alvarez. Alvarez has been struggling for like his last five or six outings. And so, you know, I I remain confident in him long term, but just to point out, he's kind of scuffling. So it was a bullpen game and the Giants gave up nine runs on 16 hits. It's hard to win a game when you're allowing nine runs on 16 hits. The Giants ultimately scored six runs again for the 10th straight game. So that run of six 
or more runs continued despite the loss in Game 3 of the series. Let's see, was there... Giants hit a lot of home runs. Tyro Estrada hit a pinch hit home run. Bryant homered, Duggar homered, Belt homered. So four home runs again. And the Giants now have 15 pinch hit home runs, which is two away from the most all-time of 17. And they hit four or more home runs again, which ties them for second in NL history. Uh, the Dodgers in 2019, amazingly, had 21 four home run games, uh, but the Giants this year tied for second most at 15 four or more home run games. If they do it one more time, they're second all time in National League history. Which, I mean, they're currently tied for second. That's amazing in its own right. What the Giants are doing is not normal, and the home runs they're hitting, the pinch hit home runs, it's unbelievable, and we should not take it for granted. Uh, in this series, Adam Frazier came back to haunt the Giants. He had been really struggling with the Padres, but he got his swing going uh, just in time to do some damage in the last couple of games here against the Giants. So yeah, the word is on Solano that he could return as soon as September 17th. So on Friday, as I said, Alex Dickerson might be a little bit longer. Alex Wood threw 21 pitches in this live batting practice and... Uh, let's see, Dickerson may take a little bit longer because there's some lingering tightness in his hamstring. So he's going to get more reps in AAA. So Giants are going to have some tough decisions to make when all three of these guys are ready to come back. It's not entirely clear what they're going to do. Optioning Tyro Estrada seems kind of logical, potentially for uh, Donovan Solano. Sammy Long was brought onto the roster today eight some innings, and he's probably going to be the guy to go when Alex Wood comes back. So a uh, lot of moves yet to be made. I'm not sure exactly what move will be made when Alex Dickerson comes back. I don't have the roster uh, pulled up in front of me, but just looking at my notes here, Johnny Cueto played catch up to 60 feet on the 15th, and it was a beginning step in his throwing progression. So Cueto's still a ways away. There, it's possible he could pitch again this year. Maybe it wouldn't come until the playoffs. I would probably bet against him returning in the regular season. When you're only throwing from 60 feet and there's only about two weeks left, it's hard to imagine him making his way back unless it's at the very end of the season and, it's, and unless it's just for, you know, limited innings. So finally, like I said, the Padres had 30 hits in the last two games of the series. Hard to win a lot of games that way. Giants made some more base running mistakes, and Brandon Belt just had kind of a monster series and got robbed by Oracle Park a couple more times in the series finale in which the Giants lost 7-4. Uh, to four. So their streak of six or more runs was broken. Kevin Gosman was not particularly sharp, so a little bit of a step, step backwards for Gosman as he has been coming back from his struggles that started to take place in July, I thought he had made a lot of progress, but today was kind of a step in the wrong direction. Hopefully in his next outing, he can get back on course. So anyway, that is all the time we have for today. It was a lot of information to digest a couple of games to talk about there. Coming up tomorrow, we're going to be doing a mailbag. I put out a prompt late last week, so a lot of questions have already been asked, but Feel free to go on Twitter at Ben Kaspik and you can still submit a question and we'll be doing that tomorrow. So once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. We do these shows every single weekday. Uh, we're free on all platforms, Apple, Spotify, Overcast, and we're also on YouTube again. So check us out there. Uh, I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.